Father, open our eyes of understanding, O Lord. May we not just be hearers of this word, O Lord. Help us to be doers of it in the name of Jesus. Father, we ask that the words of our mouth, the meditation of our hearts, shall be acceptable in your sight now and forever in Jesus' name. So let's welcome our mommy. Sure, mommy is what I call her. And she comes up with a very small speaker. Yeah, yeah, you are not acting like you are. Yeah, yeah, you are not feeling very good. Then I'll be calling the second person, brother Jacob. I'm not feeling this clap. Let you move, brother, and people are clapping. And I'll be calling my brother, the youth president, brother Paul. What are your expectations? I want to hear from one of us. I only heard from elderly people. Let me hear from young people too. Yes. What is your expectation from this country? One or two persons that wants to talk? Nobody. Okay. Praise God. So I'll be starting with our mommy. Help us describe temptation lost in five minutes. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, George. It's not about Yaya, it's about every one of us. It's a topic of everyone. Praise the Lord. Well, I, according to the dictionary, uh, the dictionary says that uh, temptation, I'll start with that, is uh, the act of being attractive, tempting, or seductive, and inducement or enticement, pressure applied to one's thinking, designed to create wrong emotions. So when you apply that to your thinking, that means that when you are tempted to the other to the opposite sex, then um, thinking designed to create wrong emotions, which will eventually lead to wrong actions. So that is temptation. You know that that means that you put pressure, you know, pressure applied to your thinking. It crossed your mind, and you didn't get away from it. You give it the thoughts, and then you continue by it. And then on lost. The dictionary says again, you know, I picked this book once because it applies to what we are discussing. Then yeah, on lost says, a feeling of strong desire, especially such a feeling driven by sexual arousal. A feeling of strong desire, especially such a feeling driven by sexual arousal. So we know what temptation is. That thought that cross your mind the moment you look at a man or a woman, you know, because sometimes now it is man to man, woman to woman. So when you look at them and then you, you you feel that pressure, you know, to keep looking, keep thinking about it, how beautiful this place is, how, how handsome this man is. I think I desire this type of man to be my husband, or I desire this type of girl to be my wife. And meanwhile, that is not the will of God for you. So you look out of the will of God and what you focus on. Is that desire in your heart? You put pressure on that that temptation that has come across you know, your mind or your eyes. Praise God. Amen. Thank you very much, man. Jacob, please describe lost temptation in five minutes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay. Um, lost. It's the mic. Okay. Lost is a strong desire, strong sensual desire for um, illicit sex, uh, power, gain, for example, you want to be rich. So you, you have that desire to, 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 to have sex, to, to acquire power and uh, maybe monetary gains as well. So you 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 it's a desire that 
is not pleasing to God. Praise the Lord. It's, it's, it's not um, a good thing. For example, in the Bible, Jesus uh, talking about God, he said, anyone who, any man who look at a woman uh, lost with, person has committed adultery. So you can see that lust is not a good thing at all. Then temptation. Temptation is a pro yeah, the way I look at it is a product of lust. It comes as a result of lust. You have a strong desire for something. We we just watched a short uh, play a few minutes ago. You will you are tempted because you have a desire for that thing. If you look at James, um, James 4, sorry, James chapter 1, verse 14. He says we, we, are, we are tempted when we are drawn by our own lust. And that's why I said temptation is a product of lust. You have a strong desire for something. So you keep thinking about it. You keep nursing the idea, the thoughts keep coming, you've not dispelled that thought. So all of a sudden you are trapped. That's temptation. You are trapped into, uh, you know, should I do it? Should I not do it? Just like that, um, our sister Pisola in that drama. She was caught in that thought whether she should submit herself to the CEO or she shouldn't do it. So that's my own uh, description of what temptation can also be. Thank you. Thank you. You see? So I'm just going to be a little bit practical. Lost, um, one of two teachers have said a lot of things about lost and temptation. But coming from um, when Gen Z, right? So this is, this is the 20th century. And let me explain how, how lost looks like. I now, I for one, I love big things. I like them tall, I like them, I like the, I like the front to be. I love everywhere to be. <laughs> no, you see, I'm just going to be very practical because we are youths and this, this affects us directly. Now, the, the last there is, you know, I am already, that's where I'm really tempted, is what I like. It's a strong desire. Eh? A strong desire to do something wrong that will not, that will not correlate, correlate with your values and morals. I'm talking about godly values and morals. Now the lost is it's almost like when you see a you see a lady, you have you have you have scanned her body, you have she's moving, she doesn't know who you are. But you have you know the Bible talks about you committing sin just by looking, just by sight. And the Bible also talked about if your eyes will or if your hand will make you to sin, cut it off. If your eyes will make you to sin, walk okay, it out. So the lost is you already have um, you already have this sexual what has to do with some, uh, anything sexual? A sexual desire of this lady. Can I just she I feel just feel that? Can I just and at that point you have committed sin? So um, lost channels temptation, channel, uh, temptation synchronizes with lost habit. All of them are very dangerous for us as Christians. Thank you very much. Because, but um, I would like to add, lust and temptation cuts across several stages of life, several spheres of life. I, for me, I like Rolls Royce. I like Lamborghini. Anybody that knows me knows that's my dream, and I'll get. It. So, <laughs> okay, so. Sometimes I feel like it's lost, actually, but because why do I necessarily need it? Sometimes you think ah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not lustful. I'm trying to explain that it's not only tend to it does it does not only tend towards sexual. I love my career so much. Sometimes I forget to do some things. Work is always on my head. That too can be lost because. I want to grow up the ladder. I'm giving it whatever it takes to get it. So, 
Some of us, you can be, I want to come out with first class. Time, you will not remember to pray. You will not remember to read the, the word of God. Sometimes you can even cheat in the class so that you can meet. So, lost is basically anything that we want to achieve. We have like a serious desire to achieve it. Devil can come in to us through that way. The first question I asked, why do Christians not know that there's temptation? It's because you are too ingrained in that desire. That like when something is, I sat down, I was looking at the life of Samson. Somebody is telling you, I want to see your end. Tell me your secret. And you kept going back to that same person. That's how some of us are. My colleague died during the pandemic. He likes to smoke excessively. He's very good at everything, but he likes to smoke. Ask me what killed him. He took the uh, vaccine and immediately, <laughs> that's what ended his life. He did not curtail that. So when you allow loss to control you, you will not be able to overpower it again. When it will start small. I have a lady that started watching pornography because her friend at 25, she didn't know what sex is. She didn't know where the body part, that all those things. And then she went just to know. And from there, she became addicted to it. I pray that as we listen to the Lord, we open our eyes of understanding. So I'll be directing the next questions to Mommy again. Now we have three minutes to answer this question. So the question is, can Christians get complete victory over impure thoughts? Because when you were describing lust, you were talking about not seeing women. Like, how will we even marry if we cannot even assess man? We cannot assess women. I want, us, I want you to help us balance the response. Let me, let me read uh, Romans 6, 17 to 18. Romans 6, 17 to 18. It is a technical question because we get it. So we can read it. The Bible says, Thank God, once we were slaves of sin, that is before we gave our life to Christ. Because the Bible says, once we give uh, your life to Jesus, it says that we have become a new creature. And then all things, the old sin, the lost, the temptations. Because like we had during the journey, the, the, there's no temptation that will come your way that God has not empowered you to come as a child of God. Except you want to continue to be a slave of sin. Okay. And it says, but now you all utterly obey this teaching we are giving you. So the teachings that we hear every time. The drama that we watch today, we keep it in our memory and we keep remember when this thing was going to happen to that lady. This was what they did, and this is how they overcome. You know, when you listen to someone, you hear them and you apply them to that situation at that particular point in time. But it says, now you are free from slavery to sin. So once you continue in the, you know, we fought for temptation, lost, you are not running away from it, you are not looking for a way to get out of it. Like they will say, do you think I can get out of this? How do I get out of this? And the other lady said, oh, there's a way out. So if you don't look for a way out, now it says, now you are free from your slaves to sin, and you have become slaves to righteous living. So the life you begin to live when you overcome becomes the life that is free to, you know, you become a righteous living. You live like a slave to it. You, know, you don't want, you don't care about anything anymore. All you want to care about is to please God. So the life you now begin to live, you don't, even when the temptation, or when you see, you know, the, the power, the empowerment is there to value. The empowerment is there for you to see a lady and just take your eyes off. Otherwise, you will see that pastors in, uh, in the Pentecostals, you know, let me say Pentecostals because at least that's where you know, we talk more about Christ and all of the Bible stuff. You see, you see, a lot of them will have been sleeping with all the women. But the moment you are empowered, by the power of the Holy Spirit, you get empowered to overcome. Because you cannot do it by yourself, you cannot do it by your wisdom, you cannot do it by your knowledge. So it is by the help of the Holy Spirit. 
And when you are in power, the Holy Spirit tells you begin. It's like a ladder, you are climbing a ladder. You know, you can't start one, one day and then you climb. If you want to climb to us, you can't just put a step down and then you are up there. You must climb that line. And it's the same thing with our Christian life, Christian journey. You are climbing the ladder of ascency, you are going up the ladder. You are praying because prayer is the armor, prayer is the law. Prayer is those things that can guide you, even when you want to fall or stumble. That is, those are the things that will help you to perform. Praise God. Thank you very much. But mommy, you can't answer my question. My second question. Okay, so my friend said, yes. one of my friends said, ah, how come all the pastors, they always help farmers? How do they do it? Do they do it to look? My second question is, how do we balance purity with accessing the future partner without being lustful? Praise the Lord. This still has to do with our mind. You know, like the, uh, the meaning of the words. Your mind has a lot to do with this. So if you don't have control over your mind, then you sit down. In fact, not just on sexual matter or on anything. You discover that your mind does go a wire. Let me use that word. If there's any word like that, your mind will just go tra just transport seconds far away. It has gone far away because you are not careful about your mind. You are not mindful of who you are. You know, like one of the things I would like that you must first of all acknowledge who you are, recognize who you are in the Lord. I am a child of God, and this must not be said of me. This must not be heard of me. Either you are in the dark place, either you are in the empty place, either you are outside. Anything you must do must be what people must say. Yes, that's what you can do. So the moment you have control over your mind, then you begin to have victory. And so getting out of that, you know, you'll be, you'll be able to package yourself so well that even if it's going to take you 10, 20 years to get married, like we have some sisters and brothers who are not married and yet they are standing for the Lord. We have a lot of testimonies of some of them. And so when you are like that, you know, it takes a lot of... I think my of us were here on my birthday. The man that came out, Pastor Aushka, he, he didn't get married early. He got married very late. In fact, people were already married and everything. And when they came out to give their testimonies, because in those days they used to be testimony nights. So sisters will talk, the brother will also talk. So that to encourage the youths that are upcoming, or maybe people that are of their age. So when you listen to their testimony, you see, how do they overcome it? It is their mind. Their mind has been arrested for Christ. They are so that they are no longer slave to sin. They have become slave of righteous living. And that is the beginning of it. Thank you very much. So let us guard our mind. Praise God. Bro, Jacob, can Christians live without having a pure thoughts? Yes, living without um, having impure thoughts. It's, it's possible because I will use two scriptures to address that question. The first one is Galatians 5.16, which says that we should walk in the spirit. It says, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the desires, I mean the, the lust of Church. Praise the Lord. So if we continue to obey that scripture and live in the spirit, walk in the spirit, uh, we will be able to overcome impure thoughts. Praise the Lord. The devil is smart. He will keep flashing those thoughts in your life in your in your life. But another scripture gives us um, a clue on how to overcome that. Praise the Lord. And that is 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4 to 5. It says, The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God, to the pulling down of strongholds. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. That lost is a stronghold. So you have the power to pull it down. It also goes ahead to say, casting down all imaginations. imaginations. And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And then, 
the most interesting one. He says, I'm bringing into captivity every thought in the obedience of Christ. Praise the Lord. So what it means is that we can use spiritual weapons to bring into captivity lost in the obedience of Christ. Praise the Lord. So with this, it should be possible for you and me to live without being controlled by impure thoughts, uh, lust, and temptation. Thank Praise you very much. So the and first thing. Sorry, I, I want to add to the question that you asked about how can you uh, balance between you know your your prayer to have a husband or a wife and then uh, not lost him. Praise the Lord. There is a difference between see and look. There are, there are two different things though. You may, you, may not, you may not be able to avoid seeing something sometimes. Or you can avoid looking. Praise the Lord. is not incubated in the heart by sin. Mm. It is by looking. <laughs> yes, so uh, most commonly among guys, when you see a lady that uh, dress half naked and is, you know, programmed to capture you, please don't look. Don't look. It's a program. The devil has programmed it to capture you, so don't look. Now to your question. See, if you want to get married to... Some people are doing ah, there. I'm seeing you. Praise the Lord. If you want to get married to a, 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 a particular person, your own spec, your own description, I don't think you should look at a particular man or a particular uh, woman and then start looking and say, this is the one, this is the type I want. I think you should rather go to God in prayer that, Father, I want... A woman like this. This is this is the one I want. So please guide me. Let the one that you have designed for me, let it be like this, like this. Let him be rich. I want this, I want this. Talk to God rather than looking at someone and then the devil start nursing that idea into you are uh, you will be good in bed or uh, this one. That is when you will now enter into lust. Praise the Lord. So it is rather better to pray to God that you want a particular, um, you want this, you want this. But don't specifically tell God, this is the man you want to marry. This is the wife. Because she has, you know, she's endowed, she's this, she's that. No. Praise the so Lord. So are you saying it's by bigger to have space? No. You see, praise the Lord. See, see, see. Why are you praying? You pray to God for something. Right? You, so you don't pray your, your you, desires. Not desires. Uh, you, desire. you are praying to God. Okay, why are you not praying to God that you should you want a poor man? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. When God says we should ask, it's not to ask for the Lord. When God says we should ask, He knows that we want something, so we should ask for it. You don't ask for what you don't need. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That your joy may be full. So instead of looking, ask God what you want. The Lord help us in Jesus. Your pop, over to you. Where should I ask the gift? Okay, so can we live without impure thoughts? Well, I would say, um, as Christians, yes. If Christ do it, we can do it. Because every now and then we try to live according to Christ. The, the, the word Christian is being Christ like. But you know, um, these days, um, 21st century, um, we there's so many things happening on, on social media. We were talking about seeing and looking. You know, sometimes you just hold your phone and something just pops up. And you just say, you say, Jesus. And you remove your eyes. Then it pops up again. You say, Jesus, remove your eyes. It pops up again, Jesus, from Jesus. You are looking at me, you read the 
You are looking at that point. So it's very possible for us to give that input to us. Now, majorly because, you see, when you, when you talk about guarding your heart, what are the things you allow your heart to absorb? Like, I'm a musician, and if you, if you, if you decide that, like this my phone, like you open my phone, you won't see David Doe, you won't see Whiskey, what you will see is Nathan Embassy, what you will see is Tony Seth. It starts from there. You must first avoid those personal triggers. What are the things that trigger you? That triggers those impure thoughts. When the Bible talks about guarding against it, that's, that's where it starts from. I'm very practical. That's where it starts from. I want to watch Nollywood. Are you watching the Nollywood that is Ramsey Noah? You're speaking. Where they have to engage in, let us do one or two kissing. They will remove the sin, but they don't want one or two kissing. Then your heart begins to. I wish. So at every time in your life, you must guard against those things that we trigger. I told you about personal triggers. Eh? Then, if you always fellowship, if you are always in the place of fellowship, when you wake up in the morning and the first thing you are doing is listening to open heaven at five in the morning, so many people don't participate. You need to open heaven at five in the morning. You are on the bus going, you are praying, 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 praying the Holy Ghost around that Walking with the spirit, how come the devil sneaking at that point? Then you are in the office, you know, as you are working, somebody's coming to you to we're talking about talking about lost and temptation. Uh, plus, if you just make money inside this part, and what you are praying inside your mind, and the Holy Spirit tells you, No, 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 you're not supposed to do that. If you walk in the spirit, if you walk with God, the Holy Spirit will be. The one to always check you. The Holy Spirit will be your guide. So for me, it is very, very possible. Even if my into the first century, it's very possible. I was talking about if your if your eyes want to make you to sin, commit it and uh, uh, pluck it. I'm talking, we're not talking about plucking it. Now you see this phone. It's possible for you to do without this phone for three days. Let me tell you why. If your phone gets worked, and the engineer tells you that. You will get this phone in three days. You know you're going to use a small phone. No one week. You are going to use a small phone. That small phone we are going to use. You no know, will use this phone. Nothing will. You will die. You can leave this phone for one week. You will not die. I can assure you. See, we need to make a conscious. Let's not, let's not try to pamper. Let's not pamper sin and pamper. What, what we do as Christians is we pamper wrong things. The Bible is there as our guideline, but no. We refuse to follow the Bible, we choose to follow uh, what are their names? Uh, uh, these celebrities. Ah, that's celebrity, that's celebrity marriage. This celebrity marriage. Why can't you look at that in Chio? But you choose to follow celebrities. So we need to get against what our heart absorbs. Thank you very much. Praise God. Thank you. 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 Colossians chapter 3, verse 15. 15 and we to 16. And let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your heart. The peace that comes from Christ. So when you are at peace with Christ, you are not fighting. You know, being at peace with Christ is when you are not struggling. You are not struggling, say, hey, let me go and wash this, let me go and wash that. You know, a lot of us can mention all the names of the actors in the Hollywood. And we don't know some of our pastors, we don't know their members. So, as members of one body, you are supposed to live in peace and always be thankful. And now, listen to verse 16. Let the message about Christ, Colossians 3 16, let the message about Christ in all its richness fill your lives. Teach and counsel each other with all the wisdom he gives. Sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. To God with thankful acts. And whatever you do or say, do it as a representative of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to Him to God the Father. So, in every circumstance you find yourself, wherever the thought is straying from, whatever is making you see and know, you have to be a representative of the Lord Jesus, because that is who we represent of us. So, you must think about it at all times. Any moment you move, feel Jesus is beside you. So the moment you feel Jesus is with you, 
you know, because I sometimes I think about it. I did not, I did not feel that Jesus is with them. You know, if Jesus is with you, yes, you are still going to tell. Yes, you are still cutting corners. Yes, you still want to speak with your boss. Yes, you still want to go and run after unbeliever boyfriends. You still want to do things that must not be hard of a believer. And that means that you are not a representative of Jesus. Mm-hmm. It means that Jesus is not with you. Mm-hmm. Praise the Lord. The next Christ in all his richness. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much. Let me, let me just say something. Um, just me, um, when you have those thoughts, do not counter an evil thought with an evil thought. Don't even counter an evil thought with a good thought. Counter an evil thought with the word. The word of God. You know, Jesus always said, Get behind me, Satan, and he counter with the word of God. So when it comes, you speak the word. That's what I want to encourage everyone here. Learn to read your Bible. Everything we do in church, make sure that you are attentive. Hallelujah. Praise God. I just want to add to what you said. Another way we have come to my pure thoughts is when we give those um, thoughts fancy name and we are looking at those people as our mentors. Now, before they call those ladies on the show. Now they say, woke up, I'm going to have a nice time. Yahoo, uh, slim mamas. Yes, they call them slim mamas. Yahoo boys now, I think they call them. I had one, it's national tech guy. Last week I was like, hey God, what is this? So, tech guy. So, let's not call evil good names. Let's call them what it is. Because by the time you start, it will start registering in your mind. Because from there, you say, ah uh-uh, ah, she be is community money and collecting. It's, not, it's nobody's father's money. Small, 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 you are going. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. The first one, guard your mind. Second one, walk by the Spirit. Third, use the word of God to counter. So, Another thing I want to add is let's analyze our desires when we get home today. Let's analyze them. Let's look at the triggers. What is that thing that I that is making me sin against God because I want to meet its desires? Whether in thoughts or in action. I pray that today's meeting will lead to a turnaround in our lives. In Jesus name. I have a question here. Time off for discussion. So let me go to the first question. What is the difference between loss and compliment? Yes, compliment. Complimenting somebody. Like without complimenting somebody in my mind, let me have the person explain that. I'm appreciating God's work in somebody's life. That's a way too of being lossful. Because you'll be like, instead of me to call him lost. You'll be like, I'm appreciating the work of God in the life of God. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, if I want to take from uh, Brother Jacob's word, that means that you are seeing the person, and then you now know, for you to compliment means you sing, and then it's going beyond saying, it's coming, you know, because that's another word that I've to So you see, and then you are so compliments must sometimes you can say, so, oh, you are dressed, your are dressing is fine, oh, you look nice, we, we do that to ourselves. But what is the joy that? You know, the, the motive behind your compliment to say, no, this is it. That's the, that's the wrong thing. If the motive behind it is wrong, it is to compliment so that the man can notice or the woman can notice that you are looking at her, you are looking at him, then that is very same So the motive. Okay, let me go to the next question. Mommy has a question. This person wrote, a sister will say she received from God about a brother. But it's not the same with the brother. Is this temptation or lust? <laughs> like a sister saw that a brother is a husband. But the brother did not see anything. So for the exact same thing, a sister cannot receive uh-uh. a sister cannot receive it. A brother, because the Bible says a man will find, so you cannot find. Though. No, what is God? Like, when the man finds, 
and the man goes for the pastor. Then you'll be two of you will be praying about it. You must pray about it before you can receive it. If you say, okay, you receive the man, that is lost. Yes. You can't begin to me. say, I have received something to my husband. Right. Right. So it's what we are talking about right. spend. That this is my spend. That is what you begin to see in my vision. If you put your mind to say, I want to receive as a sister, you begin to see your spirit for imagination. Then when the man finds you, the only thing we minister to you, that is the right man. So one of my aunties had this experience. What she did was to pray to God, to expose to the brother. She didn't go to that brother. So, so for me, I think God can choose to show the lady girl why. You have to go you until God tells that brother you are not supposed to go. But it's not it's not it's not for a lady to go and be deceiving brother. No. Okay. You you risk, you saw before him. So pray to God to let him see. Not that you receive that is not receiving. God showed you revelation. So you pray that it comes to pass. And don't help God to go and be telling the brother. Um, no, so let me just say something. You might not help God. Tell the brother. Now I have to get this very well. If you give the brother green light, you have lost it. Yes. I've had situations. Alright? When we see the green light, we can detect the green light. If you are sincere to yourself, when the sister is giving you green light, she's shining with the teeth like this. You can detect that. Okay. Now, for that sister, giving the green light is the lost. But you pray to God that God expose, make it clearer. Show me a sign. Yeah, so that's 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 Married. All of us, any few days, we pray together in the time God will be So we used to pray and we pray for this sister. You know, sister, so we just pray for her. I don't understand, we just gather together, we just pray. So but then there was no understanding. The only thing I wanted to do was to just be praying. So I will join them. Any hour I will go there. So the two of them gave us that testimony that Sister Elisa was praying and the Lord told her that that pastor is your husband. He was, she was older than the man. So she said, ah. I'm older than this brother now because they were both singles and they are attend singles. So the pastor, Pastor Ayadule, also was praying and the Lord told him that is the way. Then we said, This is this sister who did not uh, prepare my hair. I hair was the natural hair, no airing, the dark in complexion, you know. This the beauty was not really out there. She was not looking beautiful, and then her kind of dress was always big on her and everything. So the man said, ah, I can go say I'm not married. He looked at himself and saw he was then at the tallest man, and I think he's the tallest man in the gym today. So he looked at himself and said, How can I marry this sister? And so, I long story cut short, the two of them started praying differently. God spoke to two of them, they went to the pastor, senior pastor, then he spoke to them and everything. They called them together, they still went back. After the pastor had called and said, eh, Brother, so 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 said, You see, so they were still praying again. Maybe God will change his mind. Maybe you see, beautiful sister will come. Ah, me, a pastor. Why you know, pastors why you feel like this? And you know, and now by the grace of God before, no, the, the sister is late now, but the sister uh, is late. But if you look at them, after they got married, the sister changed entirely. And your mommy can testify to what I'm saying. She became beautiful. She would dress so well, no, because she, she now started working with mommy too. So her eyes will match her dress, everything matches, and then she began to look beautiful until you know, she died. So a lot of things like that happened. So don't go to the man and say, ah, ah, I've seen it is you. Like yeah, brother Paul said, you need to show yourself. When, when, when you say, brother, sister, go and do evangelism. Shine. That is the Shine. brother you are going to be. So do evangelism together. Pray together. Yes, pray together. We will pass all that to the person to pray to the person together. Because God has told you that's your husband. You know why you are doing that? Because if God loves you so much, God can deny you of that brother. Because God will not want you to fall into temptation. You see, I have had series of things like that that God has really opened my eyes to see. That if God loves you so much, He will deny you of what you think you want. He will not allow you to allow you get it. He will not allow you to get it. My son was telling me about a story 
uh, three days we were talking, and then he was telling me about uh, something that he wanted to do in Abuja because he came home for the convention. So he said, Mommy, do you know? It was being project, and God was helping them. They were doing well. Those people were sending their own profit to buy houses in Canada. And then he said, What did you know what? Those people told me I should stop. He said, Until now, some of them still don't want to talk to me. They saw him in Canada, they don't want to talk to him because they felt somebody who is the one who is tackling this thing and the thing was going well, and then he stopped. He said, They cannot even escape it. Those people that told him to stop. And now today, that about seven, about seven or eight percent of them are divorced or separated from their wives. These are believers. They are church children. They grew up as children, teenagers. You know, you know, in Akme, children, they graduate from children's class to teens, children, from teens, children, they come and have So they grew up like all of most of them. I remember before I left Canada during the COVID, we were praying over one that was separated from his wife. So he said, if you had gone into it, maybe his wife would have been away from me. So when we hear from God, follow the instruction of God. Thank you very much. Please follow the instruction of God. If you receive and you are sure that it's God's instruction, don't help God. Don't help God. The Holy Spirit is there to help you. If it is truly God, the Holy Spirit will reveal you to the person. Praise God. I just want to add, you know, reducing your age to get work, we do it a lot. It's also temptation. It's also tempting. There are plenty of simple, simple things. Let's take half couple. The Bible says I should take half. I should not be drunk. I should take this. All those things, simple, simple. Let's watch. The Lord will help us. The next question says, what does the scripture mean by block your eyes or cut off hand? It will cause you to see. What do I do if I constantly find myself in a place of lust due to my career? We have answered that one. The blocking is not literary. Eh? Guard your heart. Walk in the spirit. Use the word of God to counter that loss that is coming over time. It's good that you have acknowledged that you have it. The next step is to um, speak the word to it. If you need further um, counseling, you can see the pastor. The next one is being addicted to betting is part of the I'm not sure I get this question. Praise the Lord. I just wanted to say something about the blocking of the eye. We've already said that it is not you removing your eye. It's, that's, not, that's not what the Bible means there. But my understanding is that's not what they mean. It is talking about disassociation from things that will lead you to fall. Uh, what do they call it now? This one that the, the two naked PPN, uh, Big Brother Niger, for example. What they do there is ungodly. Why should you be watching it? Block it off. It's, it's, it's an eye that is causing you to fall. Block it off. What about uh, pornography? It is not godly. This associate that's the Big Brother Niger. This is watching. Even though yeah, so, so that's, that's what we are saying. You should disassociate yourself from things like that. What about a friend that is always forcing you to fall? Disconnect yourself from him. Remove you, the phone number from your phone. That's what we are talking about. Praise the Lord. May God go and cut your, your hands. So let me, let, me, let me say something in there, right? We are using too much, we are using too much Bible, Bible, then we are debating. So I remember sometime in 2007, 07, yeah, not in the eyes, 07, 08, I used to be a chain smoker. I don't smoke, I don't smoke in sticks, I smoke in packs. Packs, heavy packs. I smoke weed, cannabis, serious, heavy smoking out on the streets, you know. We did all man now evil things you hear and shout. Real evil. So I was drinking, so I learned how to drink by smoking. You know, so if I smoke, I will drink. If I drink, I will smoke. I can't smoke without drinking. I can't drink without smoking. That's what it was. And I don't have to explain the way we got high because, you know, brothers, I can understand this thing. So when you want to get high, you have to do that, star, three, three. I don't, those, those are the tricks then. Do that, star, three, three. 
There wasn't, wasn't any key. You don't sign more. So you add them together and then you bring, there's what they call monkey tail. So that's the Google rule. So when you add, when you add, the, no, I'm very serious, when you add the five together, that's a death sentence. And that's what we were drinking. It was heavy, it was disastrous. But you see, in all this, now, when you talk about blocking the eyes, I have people that, oh, when you don't get money, we'll go run out. Yeah. They will buy it for you. You will drink. You will be high. Then, but I know my parents always kept praying for me. When I'm high, I'm, I'm almost dying. Somewhere in my, in my, my subconscious, I'm not dead. So I'll be praying that, ah, God, let me just close this one night. Let me just pass one night to the next day, and I'll be all right. That next day, I will not pop up the highness on top of that highness. <laughs> now, how did I overcome? That's what I'm going to. You see, my parents kept praying for me. When God has a big plan for you, for your life, he will not leave you alone. Yeah. Until, until you, you know, you disassociate yourself. In as much as I'm doing all this, I, I don't miss Sunday service. I won't go during the week. But I don't miss Sunday service. I play instruments. I will wear my lady to church. I will do my hair. And I will be high before I play. But I don't miss Sunday service. So you see those words? Those words, they will just be entry. They will be entry. They will be entry. My parents get my parents get prayed. Get prayed. And as time went on, so just one encounter. One encounter. I'm telling you today, eh? If you smoke close to me, I start coughing. I don't know how to drink test like this is almost 2009, this is how many years now. I don't know how if I can come out, you can come out. It's not impossible. Nah. I don't think you guys have lost it. It's not impossible. So they say, close your eyes and those guys, I see my sin, I broke that sin when I was living down there. I broke that sin that you guys cannot get me again. I broke that sin. See you today. I don't know where those guys are. So the next question is uh, when someone is 40 years old, most men that came to her, they are younger than her. Can someone hide it? I've explained it. Hiding age is lost. You want to get what you want. Be real. My God will say to you, just ask God what you want, He will give it to you. The next question says, How can how can someone know? Brother comes to you as, as a sister and your mother than a sister. There's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong. No, she's asking if she can hide her age. No, no, no. You have to hide the age. There's nothing wrong. So long if the brother is dead, you are 40. If that is the man that the Lord has supposed to remind, forever, forever, forever. Me. So, if you can cope, yes. If you, it's not everybody that can. If God. I'm sorry. The, I think the problem, you see, the problem with this generation that I have is that what will people say? That's our problem. What will people say? When we leave, what will people say? And and, and start following what God says. What will people say? By fifty years, nobody said you again. If this year old man is a quite well. Purpose of God for your man yes. as a sister. If that man is the man where God has removed the ring, mm -hmm. you are fitting him. Mm -hmm. There's nothing you can do. Thank you very Even much. Even if you marry 40 year old, 50 year old, you will divorce the person you have in this. As long as you are. Husband. Yes, also. Thank you, man. So marry girls with irrespective yes. of your age. So the next question is Is it biblical to meet one's spouse on social media? <laughs> there are so many apps where um, people can meet up. So this person is asking. Let me answer that for us. No, they should not ask Christian. Whether Christian or not Christian. So is it is it is it by Mika? Now let me answer that. Um, you know, in our region, we are we belong to the twenty of our family. We have what we call a uh, something now connect now connect now. So people, they, you, you won't have to see the person. What they do is that uh, they organize a Zoom meeting, so all of you will be on the Zoom, and they will send the message again that you should uh, uh, don't put your video. So your video must be on, and you must be well dressed. Dress well so that the brother can see you, the sister can see you. And now, I have somebody who is uh, 
like the younger sister to me in politics. So uh, one of the, uh, our daughter's friend got connected now, and they're going to get married uh, of course, next week Saturday. The girl got connected to somebody or connects now. They met each other. So the girl is now in Ibadan. She has moved to Ibadan. So she got connected, you know, they met online and they prayed. Because it's, it's not that you connect with them and you just go. You must, you will, you will talk to the people, you know, the people that organize it are supreme in charge of church. So we should talk to you. The church will go to your pastor. Your pastor must be able to say some things, either you are a worker or not. Your pastor must say something about your life. So do such people receive from God? You receive. While they are showing the video, everybody is on. As you are there, you are praying. Because it's a sign that you pray a lot. So you pray a lot. And then you tell God, to, when God will pray that God should open your eyes, the Lord will open your eyes and tell you, there's a particular sister on this, uh, on this uh, Zoom that is your wife. Because that was what they, why that was what they said you have uh, to them. So the guy was saying, ah, how can somebody just speak me like that? Just how many weeks ago? How can they just speak me? So she refused. We were now praying. You know, all these young the girls that praise the Lord. So they were praying, they were praying. And then until so the Lord also revealed to her that that is the man for you. And so then I, I remember that uh, we have other sites like that that are Christian dating, but some of them are not true. I have a friend who is yet to be married, she's over 50, is yet to be married. And then when I came across a site like that, I introduced it to her. And so I said, yes, please, so check it properly before. So she checked, and then she told me that when she was checking, they were asking her for gender. Are you a male or a female? Well, then what do you want? Do you need a male or a female? And ah. I said, you said this in the, the something online. So I told her, I said, no, please, just close it. Have you filled your business? They said, yeah, my name. I said, no, no, leave your name. Don't worry, they won't look for you. Don't just open it any longer. So there are some, we must be careful while we go online this. So is that from yeah. Facebook? Anything. Yes, it's on Facebook. No, okay, so for me, what I think is, you need discernment. The earth is the Lord and the fullness there. So I believe, yeah, social media is in the earth ways of the Lord. But you need discernment to as many as are led by the Spirit. Yeah, the children of God. Don't be carried away. You know social media is what you see. That sometimes you see somebody on social media when you see them physically. So be sure that it's truly the Spirit. Because that way you can be distracted. You're already seeing, you're choosing from a pool of people. So you, you have to be sure that it's not your loss that is leading you. God help us in Jesus' name. We are far beyond time. But you go one minute, please. You want to say something? Yeah, yeah. I, I only wanted to add that we, we must not um, replace praying to God for our life partners with um, going to social media. That's not. That's not. Yeah, of course, God can connect you with your life partner using any method, any means. Just like He can connect you for opportunities using any other means. But our core responsibility is to pray, study God's word, know what God has for you, and if God wants to intervene, you see social media, fine. If God wants to intervene, you see the program that we've just heard about church organizing a program where they have full control of it, fine. God can use any method. But don't, don't be frustrated to the extent of going to uh, start searching for... Uh, don't okay, so the, the bottom line is don't trust in that social media to choose for you. Trust on God. Don't lose your focus on God, even while we send the social media. And this thing is not really for people that are not strong in the Lord. If you know you are not strong in the Lord, don't bother. It's only for strong people in the Lord. I pray that the Lord will help us. Again, see, the, for, for, for the young ones, young ladies, young uh, guys who are looking up to have a, um, a life partner, see, Godly behavior is key. There are a lot of young guys looking for wives. There are a lot of young ladies looking for good husbands. Put up a good behavior. It's very important. Most of the, the ladies that are uh, advanced,
Africans, most of them, is because of the life they were living. That's what has caused that. Maybe a lot of people came. So most. Yes. I say most. I'm not saying everybody. Everybody has his or her own peculiar situation. But they, what I'm saying is that foot of God, godly behavior. Do cause for. Be in church. Attend fellowship. Do what you are supposed to do and continue to pray. Praise you God. You will not be Thank you. before God will send So, so me, I want to say that um, even if you have done anything, everything, and it looks, that doesn't define you. God's way is not straight. He has a plan for you. The fact that you've done everything and it's not looking like your verse says it's where you are. Truth, yes, it's behavior. But there are some, there are some. If the, uh, I don't, I don't, like, um, a lady lacks character. And she says she's not destined to have the life partner. So character is very important. But that should not downplay that the plan of God for you. Try to understand what the plan of God is for you. When you understand it, you'll be able to live life better. Without comparing God's time, 1,000 years for God is just one minute. So I hope that explains what I'm trying to say. The next question says, what is the root spirit of lust? How do I stop feeling lost? We said that thing. Lust is from your desires. Lust is from your desires. How do you stop it? Guard your mind. Walk in the spirit. Speak the word of God. And uh, pluck your eyes to it. He said it. Anything that associates you or tempts you. If it's your data that is making you watch pornography, or if it's your friend that is making you drink too much, dissociate from them. If you light so that you can get work, correct it. Don't just listen to this word and move on. And evaluate yourself from what you have. Make changes. Trust the Holy Spirit to help you. Praise God. The last two questions. Being attracted to a... Praise God. Let me read another one. How can... Someone know that this partner is an unbeliever. If the person always take himself. So how do you know a true Christian? We know a true Christian because the person is not said. One, the person can be in church. A lot of us are in church, but we are not born again. So somebody who has a who is not born again, we show this our in our attitude. You will know that this person is not born again. Because uh, yes, by their fruit we know them. You will know if an unbeliever, you know if you know Let the person be a drama member, be a choir member, be the prayer band, be the usher, and it's not born again. That encounter with Jesus is a difference. Praise God. Can I just give some tips quickly? You know, on this uh, lost. No, let me just add the last question so you can have to Say be attractive to something. Does it mean lost? Strong attraction, strong desire, strong <coughs> feelings. That is lost. So, and we have said this so many times. So the person, I, mean, I'm sure the person I think you need to rephrase. If the desire is too strong, yes. when Bible says, "Love the Lord with all your heart, all your anything that you love with all your heart and all your strength and all your and power." And God. And it is not God. I hope that answer. Praise the Lord. I just want to give us this uh, six or seven points so that I want us to give you this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to write it out. I'll type it out and I will send it to the report so it can be on our platform. The youth platform. So that I'm going to do it. I can be on this platform. You know, I just cross the road. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Number one is to acknowledge, first of all, the type of loss of temptation that you are facing for those who are facing it right now. Because I know we have some people here who are facing it. Because if some people come up if there's no need for it to be discussed. If there's nobody that is suffering from it, a topic will always come up so that the need will be met. So you must first of all acknowledge the type of situation you are going through. And then you are sure that this is what I'm fighting with. So it is important for us to know that the loss is a temptation and there's a devil behind it. 
you must know that there's a devil behind us. You know, devil, evil, you know, all these powers those who want us, they don't want us to stay. They don't want us to serve God. They want us to be on the other side. And when you serve God, your life shines. But you want darkness to cover our lives. For those who have been reading local echoes from uh, uh, the past six or seven days now, you know that if your life shines, then you are, you are, you are all. But when there's darkness, that is the work of the day. <coughs> then number two is to go to God in repentance. The moment you know you are lost, you, you are you know you have been tempted, you are following all of that that we have mentioned here today, just go to God in repentance. Ask God to forgive you and ask that God should come and help you. Then number three is to get determined to find in every means to run away from that point. Either it is your office, sack yourself. God, if you, as long as that office is what uh, is giving you the loss of temptation, when you leave that place, God will give you another work. In fact, maybe God will even bless you to say that you won't even be working, you will become an employer of labor. So get the time to run away from such environments like uh, Joseph did. And then uh, I have an, uh, an example of a pastor, Pastor Mrs. Oguson, who she told us of her uh, situation that when she was, uh, uh, she was teaching them as a lecturer, that she had a man also a lecturer who was always coming to me. And any time she see the man, oh, the two of them will want to, they want to see, they want the man, uh, the two of them will want to go out or do whatever they want to do. So she told us how she got out of it, that he prayed it, and then she had deliverance. So if you are one of us here who feel you are, you are deep in it, and then how do I get out of it? Maybe you can't say it or you can't write it. Just go to pastor or any one of us to pray for you for deliverance. That's what you need. So get the time to run away from that environment. Then make up your mind after making all conscious efforts to seek always God's help. Seek the help of God. And that is by going to pray. Then we must seek to walk in righteousness. Seek it. You know, when you are determined to work for God, to do things to please God, God will now release the empowerment for you. The power of the Holy Ghost will be there. So it is not that you are struggling to stay for God. No, you no longer struggle to stay for God. You just find it easy. Easy not to drink, easy not to smoke, easy not to humanize, easy not to keep boyfriend, easy not to go to clubs, and so on. So make a conscious effort to walk in righteousness to please our Father in heaven. And then uh, be determined every day to walk on the path of righteousness. Psalm 23, verse 3. Be determined to walk on the path of righteousness every day. Be conscious of the fact that Jesus is with me, walking with me. Can this be go left? Can this be go right? And then study the word of God. Make the scripture the air that you bring in. If you breathe air, you know, if air blows your body, you know what it can give you. It will give you life. So make the word of God the life that you have. Take us quotations from the scripture, write them out, and we always memorize them. Keep them in your memory. So the more the temptations come, the more the loss come. The more the word of God you eat, use to eat it. And then remember that Jesus has died. You know, Jesus, remember Jesus said, uh, when Jesus was uh, having a conversation with Satan, you know, they told us after he said, 40 days, 40 nights, that uh, Satan came to him. Satan did not come to Satan to him. It was in his thoughts. And the same thing we also have. We also have such too. So Satan did not show up physically. So it can also come in your thoughts. So let the word of God guide your heart. And lastly, recognize your identity. Ephesians 4 tells you, recognize your identity in the Lord. If you recognize your identity in the Lord, that makes the difference between you and others in your office, in your place of work, in, your, in the church, anywhere you find yourself. Praise the Lord. Thank you very much. If you are blessed by this interactive question uh, section, can you please give a round of applause to our speakers as they do our